It's time for a March TBR. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I just hash out everything that I want to read in March. March feels like a weird month to me because I feel like there's a lot of stuff that I want to read coming out like the end of the month in April and I don't know, I feel like I have a lot of stuff that I want to catch up on. So I think I'm going to take this month to just kind of catch up on some series that I've been meaning to read and other things that I've been kind of putting on the back burner for now. So I feel like it's just going to be like a lot of sequels and stuff like that before like a lot of my most anticipated releases come out in March, early April. So it, it's just going to be like a random mishmash of things that I wanted to get to, but I feel like I've set out these lists of things that I wanted to get to this year and I haven't gotten to all of them. So I'm just like, all right, I need to make sure that I am accomplishing these goals that I set forward to myself, even though reading is just a hobby. It's all arbitrary. It's for fun. If I don't meet these goals, like who cares? But I personally set out these list for myself because I know that it's things that I'm going to enjoy. So let's do it. And I feel like when summer comes, like spring, summer, April, May time and like the weather's changing, it's just like nice. I feel like I'm going to want to shift to like more like lighthearted rom-com type books. I don't know. We'll see. I think like my reading, what I'm reading is going to change like over the months. So we'll, we'll see. Let me just get into the books that I want to read. So first up, this book is The Bridge Kingdom by Daniel L. Jensen. And this is on my February TBR and I'm filming this pretty much like the week before March. So I'm hoping that I can get to this one in February and then pick up the sequel. And like this will be my last book in February and then the sequel will be my first book in March. So that's what I mean, kind of like wrapping up some loose ends around here. And this just sounds like the perfect fantasy romance. And I'm just like in love with this edition with, uh, let me show you. The chapter headers are the coolest things I've ever seen. So I'm gonna pick this up. I feel like I'm probably, I should just purchase the sequel hardcover like now because I just know I'm gonna love it. So there we go. The Bridge Kingdom is about Laura who is a princess whose kingdom has kind of been like oppressed by this bridge kingdom who controls this bridge that controls all of the trade routes. She's been trained since she was a child to be a spy and she is arranged to marry the king of this bridge kingdom and she goes in to try and gather inside information and to potentially take out the king himself. However, once she gets to the bridge kingdom, she sees that the things she's been told her whole life may not be what they actually are like and she has to decide for herself what is more important. And as her mission draws her deeper into what it means to control the bridge, she finds that her simmering attraction to her new husband may just be impossible to deny. So it's just like a marriage of convenience, enemies to lovers, forced proximity, a lot of tropes that I love squished into one. And I love this cover, but I also love the digital cover as well. Super pretty. So yeah, hopefully this is going to be the last book that I get to in February because I'm actually doing really well in my February TBR. I have three more books to finish and I just feel like I want to dedicate myself to reading this weekend. So who knows, maybe there will be a vlog documenting said reading. So yes, Bridge Kingdom. And then the sequel is The Traitor Queen. This is the digital cover. And then this is the cover, like the print cover. So I want to start off with this fantasy romance series and then move on to another one because you guys know I'm a huge sucker for fantasy romance. I've just been loving the genre <laughs> so much. So the next book that I plan to read in March will be Deadly Dreams by KJ Sutton, which is the third book in the Fortuna Sworn series, which I absolutely adore. If you see here, Fortuna Sworn and Restless Slumber, these covers are just everything. And this book is like the thickest one yet. So I can't wait and you know if like a fantasy romance is good if i buy it because usually i've been reading them on kindle unlimited um but when i when i purchase the actual book that's when you know it, it means a lot to me uh this book is just super cool because fortuna is a badass she's such a badass and i love her let me i'll hold up the, i'll hold up this cover and i think this is going to be i don't know how many books are going to be in the series i think at least six 
we will be tortured for a long time and i will love every second of it and the second book ended on such a huge cliffhanger and i'm really interested to see where this one's gonna go because things like were literally crazy at the end fortuna sworn is a nightmare and she is the last of her kind ever since her brother went missing two years ago being a nightmare means that she can manipulate anyone's fears and give them visions of what they fear the most okay give them nightmares she has been blending in with the human world trying to work by day and search for her brother at night after she is captured by some goblins and brought to a black market and this powerful fairy frees her he approaches fortuna and wants to make a deal with her he makes no attempt to hide that he desires fortuna and he offers something irresistible and so fortuna leaves her comfortable existence in the human realm behind to step back into a world of creatures and power and it just has the romantic tension is just amazing and i really love the court politics and intrigue as well and it's just one of those books where nothing is what it seems initially with characters and so it's just been such a journey to love and to read and i won't i won't stop talking about my love for this series you know i won't stop this next book is an arc that I was sent by the publisher, so thank you to William Morrow Books for sending this my way, and it's Second First Impressions by Sally Thorne. I read The Hating Game by Sally Thorne, and it was like the first rom-com that I ever read, and I just loved it so much, just like superior office enemies to lovers. It's amazing. And so this one seems really, really cute. Look at the little turtles on the cover, and I also need to read 99% Mine by her. It's just a random thought of mine. But Ruthie Madonna has worked the front desk at this retirement villa for years. And she is basically living on site. She's at the beck and the call of all these wealthy old residents. And the rare tortoises that roam the lawn. So that's where these little guys come in. She is set in her routine and nothing ever changes until she lands eyes on Teddy Prescott, the son of the retirement villa's new owner and her new neighbor. He is tall, tattooed, and with magical hair, and he's in town to save up money to achieve his dream of opening up a tattoo shop. He's the definition of risky, and Ruthie is dazzled at first sight, so much so that he mistakes her for a little old lady. <laughs> and so Ruthie is the perfect revenge for Teddy's insulting first impression. And her residents have an ad out for seeking a new personal assistant to torment. The Parleons are 90 year old four foot tall menaces and not one of their assistants has lasted a week and so she offers teddy up to be their assistant and things go from there i mean this just sounds like such a cute and fun premise the fact that teddy mistakes ruthie for a little old lady just has me already like laughing like sally thorne impressed me so much with the way that she wrote the hating game and the tension between the two characters the banter and i feel like this setting and this situation just has a lot of room for there to be a lot of fun in the story so i absolutely can't wait this one is out in april let's see what day in april this is out april 13th 2021 so keep an eye out for its release and I will definitely be talking about it in my March wrap up at some point if you are curious about what I thought about it when I finish. And as always, a Goodreads review will be posted as well. So next, I really want to continue on with this manga series that I have been reading and that is The Promised Neverland. In March, I want to get to at least volumes three and four. I read volume two in February. And this is a really cool manga that I have just been loving reading. This is about this orphan home where all these children are living and every day they get tested on their mental abilities and they have playtime and they have this caretaker called mom who has always been nice and they have depended on her for everything in their life until one day they find out the truth of what is really happening in the outside world and what happens to the children when they get adopted and what the purpose of these mental aptitude tests are every single day and it's pretty dark and twisted and so from there they're just trying to um survive five the first two volumes that i've read in this series it's just so captivating and interesting i'm really kind of dark and twisted so i just am really excited to read on with this series and see what happens and there is an anime i think so i want to see what volume the first season it covers and then get to watching the anime as well okay so now i'm going to go through a few ebook romances that i want to read this month the first one being The Initiation, which is number one in the Filthy Rich American series by Nikki Sloan. And this one is pretty short, so hopefully I'll get through it pretty quickly. And apparently it's just like crazy insane in the end, and I need to read it to find out what the heck happens. That is what I have been told. 
by multiple people. No one knows how new members are selected to the board of the Hale Banking and Holding Corporation, but there are rumors of a sordid ritual of initiation and whispers of how one woman and nine men disappear into a boardroom. The Hale family owns everything and now Royce Hale wants to own the love interest. He is charming, seductive, ruthless, but overall he is the prince of lies and our love interest will make a deal with the devil to save her family and sell herself to the Hales, but Royce will never own her heart. I've just heard that this book is insane, and so I want to read it and see what everyone is talking about. Then the next romance books that I want to get to are at least number three and four in the Wicked Villain series by Katie Robert. I would potentially maybe get to more in the series, but I'll just cover three and four in this TBR video because I feel like that's like a reasonable goal for this month. So number three is A Worthy Opponent, and if you don't know what the Wicked Villains series is about, it is a romance series where we have retellings of like the heroine paired with the Disney villain. And so this third one that I want to get to, A Worthy Opponent, is Tinkerbell and Captain Hook. Once upon a time, Tinker, Tink, okay, Tinkerbell, was a girl who believed in loved and happy, happily ever after, however, not now all she believes in is revenge. And unfortunately for her, there's only one man willing to help her achieve that revenge, and that is Hook. And Tink is willing to pay any price to bring Pan down, even if that means selling her soul to Hook. So it just sounds like romance goodness. It's a really, really fun series. If you like romance, definitely check these ones out because it's a great time. Then the fourth book in the series is The Beast, which is a retelling of none other than Beauty and the Beast. So once upon a time, Belle fell in love with two men and their feelings for Belle were matched only by their hatred for each other. In the end, Belle couldn't choose and she lost them both. Now, Belle is tasked with setting power limits for her family in this city that is divided up by different gangs, which means that she must sit down with Gaston and Beast in order to divide up their territories, but only for as long as it takes her to choose one or the other. Hmm, a little fun there, huh? I do kind of wish I could get to the other four in the series and I, maybe I'll just put all four of them on the TBR this month because like, why not do that? Okay, so let's talk about the next two. I mean, all these books are under 300 pages or around 300 pages, so they don't take super long to read. Okay, let's, let's talk about the, <laughs> the next ones in the series. Number five is The Sea Witch. So once upon a time, Ariel met a man and fell in love with him. In Ariel's desperation to reunite with Alaric, her love, she turns to the sea witch. Ursa is as beautiful as she is dangerous, and the one person Ariel's father warned her to never get close to. An auction to sell herself is the only thing of value that Ariel has, and the money will free Alaric and they can finally be together. Except nothing is simple as all, Ursa is playing games, and Alaric just might turn out to be just as much of a villain. I mean, it sounds like a good time. <laughs> And then let's see the last one in the series. I think it's only gonna be six total. And then there's also a bonus short story collection, I believe. So let's see, the last one is Queen Takes Rose. And this is between Aurora and Malone. Malone is one of the most feared leaders in Carver City and her reputation is more than earned. And she has scheduled Aurora for her final two nights of her contract in a BDSM club, which by the way, all these stories kind of like revolve around this BDSM club. And maybe Aurora should be afraid, but all she feels is anticipation. So yeah, Katie Roberts just does smut so well. So I need to read these. Okay, and then the last two books I want to talk about are two books that I have e-arcs e of and I really want to read, get to these because they just sound like great new releases. The first one being A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Sutterworth. This takes place in Toronto where there is an underground network of Fae and we have four main characters who have kind of come to unravel a plot that is taking place an ironborn half fey outcast, a temptuous fury who has been exiled, a dutiful fey prince determined to earn his place, and the prince's brooding bodyguard. These four teens each hold a key piece to solve the murders that have been wrecking Toronto, and they must form a tenuous alliance in order to bring about the peace. And this is apparently a very queer novel where we have a WLW couple and an MLM couple. The next book, on my list is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley and this cover, I'm just like obsessed with this cover. It's a debut fantasy perfect for fans of Sorcery of, Thor Sorcery of Thorns and Girls Paper and Fire, two books that I adore. 
Tamsin is the most powerful witch of her generation. However, she has been cursed to never love and the only way that she can experience love is by stealing it from others. Ren is a source, a rare kind of person who is made of magic despite being unable to use it herself. And she has been spending her life caring for her ailing father hiding in secret. When a plague ravages the land, Ren's father falls victim and so she strikes a bargain with Tamsin. If Tamsin will help her find the dark witch responsible for creating the plague, then Ren will give Tamsin her love for her father. And uh, things progress from there. They head out on a journey and who knows what will happen. Okay, and then I wanted to throw one more fantasy romance book on there because apparently I have huge ambitions for this month. So, I created a poll on my Instagram of two fantasy romances that I was considering picking up this month. So let's see how the poll is going. Okay, so I'm about to film my March TBR and I'm in between a few of the fantasy romances that I want to read from my fantasy romance list I posted a few months ago. So I decided I'm going to let Instagram decide which ones I put on my TBR for the month. I wish I could get through all of them, but... It's not humanly possible. And it looks like Rhapsodic has won the poll at the point where I am looking at it. So I put up Rhapsodic and Radiance. So in Rhapsodic, it's called the Bargainer series. Calypso is a siren with a very serious problem. For the last seven years, she wears a band of black beads that twirl up her arm and represent bargains that she has made and each bead represents a favor that can be called in. The bargainer has never asked for repayment until now and when he shows up in the middle of the night in Catley's room, things are about to change. For him, it's not just the prospect of rekindling an old romance, there is something that is changing in the other world. There are fae that are going missing and only the women are returned in a glass casket with a child clutched to their breast and so things are pretty bad and he'll need the help of a siren that he spurned long ago to help him discover what exactly is happening in his kingdom and how to save everyone. And I think this is a trilogy. I've heard it's a dark fantasy romance that people just love and I want to read it because I'm all about that fantasy romance. Okay, so that is my very eclectic TBR for March, kind of just trying to read a bunch of things that I have on my mind. No really rhyme or reason to it, but that is kind of just what I'm feeling like right now. So let me know what you are reading down below in March. Um, let me know if you've read any of these books, what you think about them. Like just leave a little comment, leave a little heart. If you watched this video and got this far, I love interacting with everyone. And that's all I have for today. So have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.